talking last time we talked about why epubs why interactive epubs and this time we're getting to a little bit about the tools well one tool in particular this time and that is pages from apple apple pages is a nice way to make epubs again if you're a mac owner you probably already have pages and if someone has word you can import it in and then make your changes make it to an epub actually pretty quickly and pretty easily so let's look at some basics with epubs at least for when you're dealing with pages you can't have separate columns unlike say indesign where you can then just say you know you thread it and then it pulls it into an epub and no worries uh, this one is really you got to have just one singular column and have your stuff in but it's pretty easy to set up if you already have an epub that you've already used or you have something like the epub best practices download they have paragraph styles in there that you can use and import pretty easily you can use your format import styles and once you do you'll have your styles in your little styles drawer kind of set up like like showing here and it will allow you to make your styles pretty quickly and easily and set up your things so you don't have to keep doing it over and over again which is very nice when you're adding images in let me put in an image show you an example exactly what I mean so that you fully can appreciate it it's pretty simple with pages you can literally just drag and drop I'm gonna go down to my finder um, here's my HTML5 display drop it in obviously that's too big for what I want size it down size try again size it down drag it over here yeah a little smaller still still too big in my opinion there you go simple all right now with epubs you don't want to have floating images and that is the default if you notice it says flimmies does not move with text um, you really want to use inline inline will anchor it in place and as soon as I hit inline you'll notice it will change oh I shifted don't worry about it you have your object control over here gonna again float it to the right and if you notice this little blue anchor it's showing you basically where it's kind of attached to so by default it's going to try to stick with this title here of HTML um, you can always make your adjustments if you want and, and you know better close to where you want the other thing is text fit text fit is basically adding padding to and around your object I'm gonna add 10 points of padding around my HTML uh, image and just give it a little breathing space and again pretty simple the other thing that you can add in here is movies nice thing about using pages as opposed to other things like say InDesign um, InDesign you'll look for various outputs and some of them will be off or excuse me won't allow like at least I should say with InDesign 5.5 I don't know about InDesign 6 I don't have InDesign 6 um, but you won't be able to use say M4V you will be able to use an MP4 um, but sometimes you have M4Vs or other versions. The good thing about using pages is you can drag and drop a video in, even if it is a different compatibility. Let me grab um, YEPUBS M4V just to show you. I'm going to drag it in here. And while it's doing that, let's go again. I'm going to change it to inline. I want it to wrap and I want nothing else around it. And let's see what else I want here. There we go. That's about what I want. And now that it's in, what it will actually do is once we check the code, you'll see that it converts it over to something that's going to be compatible for um, EPUBs without you doing anything else, which is very nice. You don't have to worry about having. You know, well, I made this video and now, oh man, I got to reconvert it. I got to bring it back into something else. I got to bring it in the handbrake. I got to convert it. I got to do whatever. 
it will do it for you. Very nice. Plus, we'll make a poster for you. And you might say, well, what's a poster? If you don't do a poster, what will basically happen is your user will see a black block there. Um, but by providing a poster, it basically allows an area to see a first screen capture of the first frame with a little play button. That way they know, hey, this is the video, click it, and it will run. So pretty simple to use there. Other thing worth mentioning, because we're especially because we're going to put an act interactivity in this, if you look on this side over here, you'll notice that 2, 3, and 4 are in this yellow square. That's basically saying that this is a singular section. These five and six have its own sections, and of course you have our cover page. Now I changed these to be chapter titles. Again, for the TLC, if we were looking in the document, it will auto automatically generate those as part of the TLC. And if you, again, if you want to have interactivity, you need to have them, well, in this case, we're going to have them in separate sections because what I'm going to basically do is, this first section where I have no interactivity, I'm going to leave the output alone because I'm fine but in these other sections when I'm adding interactivity I'm actually gonna remove some things items from the doc type and put in my jQuery and all that stuff and those need to be on separate pages because by default it will turn it into one long XHTML document which I don't want um, so and as you can see here if you go into to your document inspector in your TOC section you can then make your choices about where you what you want to have in your TOC. I have it by chapter title and chapter subtitle. You can do it by heading. Um, you can add multiple items in there if you want. So that's fine for me. Now the only thing I have to do is output it, share, export. It's going to ask you what name do you want for it. And I use blog pages too, even though I have one in there already, it doesn't matter. You probably notice there that checkbox, yeah, floating objects aren't supported next. Obviously, in this one, somewhere I have a floating document that I probably put in. You need to find your floating documents, I mean, excuse me, your floating objects, and make sure that it is not floating. That's in line. I don't have many things on here, but you want to go through and check those, make sure that you don't have anything floating. You have everything up. Ah, there we go, floating in line. Tech space. So there you go. All right. Hopefully that's the only one. But anyways, export it out, and then in a second we'll look at the vert. We'll look at the the EPUB, and we'll look at how to add the interactivity to it. See you in a moment. All right, so we looked at the basics of pages and creating an EPUB. Now we're going to look at adding some interactivity to it. Now, in this, I made two different copies because I don't think you want to sit here and watch me type. <laughs> so I have one version kind of like a before and one version that's an after. All right, so what I basically did is I took the EPUB and I basically just unzipped it. If you have uh, a Windows machine, you can just right click. If you're using something like uh, an Apple, like obviously this one is, because if you're probably using that if you're watching this because you're using pages, um, you can use something like uh, uh, ZipPeg. Um, and there's also a script, the EPUB zip and unzip, uh, very handy tool to have. You can just drop it in there and it zips and unzips. Um, EPUBs, obviously, and it will output a folder for me. So this is basically what it will look like. You'll get your your folder with your important information in here that you need as far as your Excel, your container, your MIM type, but this is where the bulk of your information is. It broke up the book into three different pages in this regards because again, I, where I put those chapter titles and I added those sections, that's where it broke it up to. Now, when we look at this, let's open this up quickly, the Aptana. And again, you could open it with any um, basic HTML editor. It doesn't take a special one to, to make the changes with them. Um, but it's good to have something, obviously, you can't you can code it by hand also. Um, that's part of the reason why we didn't page it. So, so a lot of the heavy lifting was going to be done um, via pages that 
No, right. So, here is my, let me drag it up here. Now, as you notice in pages, it made, in this, it, it just kind of grouped everything together into one long string. Uh, we can obviously break this up, and you pro I would suggest breaking it up just to make your life a little bit easier. But we'll get into the after, that after. Here's where you really want to look at things. The first page, and all the pages actually, you're going to see this XML version 1.0 encoding. For any of the pages you have interactivity on, you want to get rid of this right here, this first line. I got to do is delete it. And because it's not changing, it still has an XHTML, it will still find it. Um, but you have to get rid of it. Well, I shouldn't say you have to. Nine times out of ten, you're going to have a problem if you try to add interactivity and you still have this line. If you delete that line, it will work every time. So you make the choice on what you want to do. I get rid of the line. That way I can add my interactivity as I want. The other thing, obviously, you'll notice is that, at least for the plugin that I'm using, you see we have our div here, but I want to put it into a separate div, so I'm going to actually move it out and put it into its own div. All right, so this is, again, the kind of the before. And let's open up the other one so you can see it. Again, I don't think you want to sit here and watch me type. This initial one I did a little bit different. My original. Okay. So here's the after. As you can see, I erased the X the XML one in the beginning. I added the script just as you normally would for my plugin. The particular plugin I'm using is the Flex Slider. I added my normal JavaScript. Now, the other thing I also want to tell you, this C data type. You really want to add that in when when dealing with these. Again, not every time will it cause a problem if you don't, but many times it will. About half the time. It's very iffy. So add the C data and it will work every time. You just add it in between your script tags and close whatever you're going to add in there and it's done. Very simple. So again, in this I put in my flex slider just as you normally would. And it had, didn't have a problem working at all. It was very, very simple. But you really want to remember those two things. Include your C data. Erase the first line. Once you do that, you can output it, and it won't cause you a problem. Just, at least for my case, I'm going to rezip it. So I will drag the, the copy of this for me down to my pub zip and it's going to rezip it and create a new EPUB for me and then just put that into my put that into my library for iTunes and I'll show you that working in a second all right here is the pages output we just did here's our EPUB Saw the cover art there, just as we put in, we asked it to do. And here is some of our interactivity we added. We added, I added a jQuery slider in here. For a little bit of extra something in here. Again, galleries and sliders are probably the most uh, popular of all the jQuery plugins there are. Um, and so I added one in the book just to add a little something to it. And of course we have our video in here. And again, even though it was a different version, just dropping in pages, it converted it as I wanted and made a little poster for me, as you can see here. And still fully accessible as you would want in a, an EPUB. Again, you got those nice floating uh, images. And again, pretty simple. 10, 15 minutes of work. Don't forget to get rid of the XML line at the top. Um, see data around your jQuery or JavaScript won't cause you any problems and again just leave one of the XMLs and you know, say on the first page and then all the rest of the consequent pages get rid of the XML uh, tag at the beginning and you'll be just fine. I right, have any questions drop me a line talk to you later bye